In the study of rings, understanding the idea of a ring is fundamental. So there are always trivial uh, ideas in any ring. There is the zero ideal and the whole ring is always an idea. And we know that for a commutative ring, uh, if uh, a ring, a commutative ring only has these two trivial ideas as ideas, and there are no other ideas, then each element uh, is invertible, and therefore the ring is actually a field. Now, this is not true anymore in the non-commutative case, and a nice example to keep in mind, and a nice counterexample to this, is the ring of endomorphism of a vector space, so the endomorphism ring, uh, at least when the vector space is finite dimensional. So let's see the precise statement and notation here. I will denote by V a vector space. of finite dimensions. Say M over a field K. Now the ring, the so-called endomorphism ring, is a ring, of course, in the sense that here endomorphisms are linear maps from V to itself, which can uh, we know can be added, so we have a plus operation, and then a multiplication, which is given by the composition of two maps. In fact, this ring is, is even more, it is an algebra over K, because we can also mul uh, have a scalar uh, multiplication. We can multiply uh, an endomorphism by a scalar element in the field K. But this now is not important. So the, the statement here is the following. The only ideas, say J, in this ring, are the trivial ones. Now, as I said, here, this is the this statement, what we want to uh, study today, is, a, is an interesting counterexample because uh, obviously um, the ring, the endomorphism ring, is not a field since there are some non invertible endomorphisms. So, this gives a counterexample to the fact that this property of having only these two trivial ideas as idea doesn't imply the ring to be a field in the non-commutative case. Now, there are, very, there are various ways to, to show this, uh, this fact. And so I want, to, I want to take a very concrete approach. That is, we all know from linear algebra that the endomorphism ring can be identified with the matrices of uh, square matrices of uh, n by n, where n is this dimension of V, with coefficients in K. So the first point of my strategy is uh, to work in this concrete setting, so to realize that this ring is isomorphic to the ring of matrices mn with coefficients in k, where n is the dimension of v over k. And so, of course, to prove this statement in the abstract setting of the endomorphism is the same that to prove it for square matrices with coefficients in a field. Now, the strategy is simple. We suppose we have an idea
of the of our matrices ring and we suppose that j is not zero and we want to show that j is the whole ring that is uh, j contains the unit the one or in this case the identity matrix now in order to show this we will adopt the following strategy we will show that our ideal j when whenever non zero always has to contain uh, the say elementary matrices of this form we will show that these matrices are in j where the matrix ejj or eii is the matrix with zero everywhere except in position ii where there is a one okay so matrices of this form here one in position ii and then of course you see that once we show this uh, well j is an ideal in particular a group under addition so it has to contain the sum of these elements which obviously is equal to the identity matrix and then we would be done so the question is how we want to do this now the idea is that Say we take some matrix A in our ideal J. Let's, let's draw a visual uh, picture of this situation. Here is a diagram of our ideal J inside our ring. And I pick some matrix inside. Of course, since I suppose that J is not reduced to the zero, I can assume that A is different from zero so here somewhere there will be of course the zero matrix and i pick a non-zero one now the idea would be from starting from any a of this of uh, non-zero a matrix a to act with uh, by multiplying with elements in the ring the, the matrix a and somehow move A around to some other matrix and maybe to some other matrix and so on until we reach uh, the elementary matrix say E11 that I uh, wrote previously and in fact this, this uh, process we can also start it again and reach all the elementary matrices of this form so what I mean is that for any say matrix M in the ring of course I can act uh, say on the left of A by multiplying A on the left with M and this still has to be an element in J, because J is an idea. And of course, the same would be true for by multiplication on the right. In other words, we are going to construct some orbits of this A uh, that would lead us to show that these uh, elements E11 up to E and N are in J, which is what we want to show. So in order to do this, uh, I will need to have a quick recall on some elementary operations that we can do on matrices.
In other words, uh, we know from uh, usually the first course in, li in linear algebra that there are some matrices, which I can call, for example, R, I, J, which are obtained as follows. I take the identity matrix, and I exchange the rows i and j and this r here stands for rows so exchange row i and j and similarly we have matrices c i j c for columns where i start again from the identity matrix and I exchange the column I and the column J. Now, it is known, but I suggest you verify this if you haven't seen it before, that by acting uh, on, a, on a matrix on the left, so by multiplying a matrix on the left by R A J, then what we get is the same matrix A, but with uh, the rows I and J exchanged. And similarly, A multiplied by Cij, so acting on the right with the, this column exchanging matrices, this is what we get. Columns i and j exchanged. So just, just to make a simple check, for example, in 2x2 two two matrices, the matrix, the general matrix A, B, C, D, I multiply this with the matrix identity where I exchange the columns, so this is the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, and this becomes matrix B, T, A, C. So it has the effect of interchanging the columns of the matrix where we, of the matrix where we, where we have acted. Okay, now that we have this uh, uh, recall, this, this basic fact of uh, matrices, we can proceed with studying our orbits of a non-zero matrix A inside this idea. So suppose I take my matrix A of the form A, I, J, for J, I and J from 1 to M inside the idea as an element of big capital J. So here, just to keep track of our picture, we have the idea and our matrix A. Now, of course, A is different from zero. So suppose there is one element, I call it Aij, which is different from zero. We will proceed now in several steps and we will reach, uh, we will construct these, uh, these orbits. So the first step is observe, is the observation of the fact that we can move, move around this, this non-zero element Aij in the matrix whenever, wherever we want. So let me say Remove AJ, AIJ um, anywhere. I mean, inside the matrix, in any other position. And this is, well, precisely because we can act with these elementary uh, matrices. So say I replace, I replace uh, A with another matrix, 
matrix, which is I take the matrix which exchange which exchanges the rows of A, which is this one, which is would be just A, uh, but with the uh, I'm sorry, here I want to exchange uh, row I, but with the uh, row K. So I bring the element aij here to the la to the row to the kth row and this of course is an element of the idea in other words we have done some step uh, here with this multiplication but we are still inside the idea j and now of course if i can if i multiply on the right by c uh, k j in this way i will exchange the columns k and j and of course again this new matrix matrix would be yet another point inside the idea because maybe i should have mentioned before but uh, when i when i talk about ideas i always mean uh, bilateral ideas in other words ideas which are both left and right ideas i can multiply both on the left and on the right by elements in the ring so by by this matrix you see that i moved my element now in position a k k so somewhere on the diagonal so now i have an element here at position k where k is any I could have chosen any k from 1 to n so now I have somewhere here basically the same matrix A but where I moved around one, uh, I switched two rows and two columns in such a way that in the position a k k there is a non-zero element this is the first step now the second step is, is even simpler that is I can assume that akk is equal to 1 so I can assume that the element akk is actually 1 the element 1 in the field k in the field of scalars why can I do so because otherwise I would replace, so I, do, I would do another transformation of A, uh, with, say, the matrix A, K, K inverse, since A, K, K admits an inverse, times the identity, the identity matrix times A. So, of course, this is some matrix. Uh, in our ring and the multiplication of this because j is an idea is again an idea of j so when i say here replace um, i use the word replace or i can assume this is what i mean that i am moving in this diagram to some other matrix which of course i could call a prime a second a third and so on but just uh, to make to keep things simple i re rename it again a so that i can still work with the letter a all along but of course we are changing the matrix here so up to this uh, multiplication i can replace a with another matrix and now not only a, the element a k k is not zero but it's precisely one and then the final step is to observe that now if I multiply this new matrix which I will still call it A with the elementary matrix A uh, E K K so here this this matrix what does uh, this multiplication how does this transform A well it would uh, basically kill all lines all rows of a except the kth row 
where we know that in the diagonal there is a, num a one somewhere and then some other maybe non-zero stuff on the rest of the line but on the rest of the row but in any other uh, spot we get zero now fine i have a new matrix with this non-zero line and this one on the di diagonal and now i can multiply it on the right by the same matrix ekk and of course this would kill everything except this row and so what we are left with is precisely the element ekk and of course since this first multiplication here is with one element of the ring with one element of the ideal we're still in the ideal and then on the left and on the right again uh, these elements have to remain inside the idea so our final step have has finally shown that uh, this elementary matrix ekk is inside the idea and this was true for any k because in step one i could have chosen any k and so we are finished